Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. Are you tired of grinding away to make money, feeling like you need to clone yourself to make your business a success? I know I was once there too, working 12 to 14 hours a day, seven days a week with no me time and totally overwhelmed. I knew there had to be an easier and more fun way to make massive money. And that's when I discovered passive income. Fast forward years later, and now I consistently make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year while I sleep and with little of my time. My Lord, is this a freeing and empowering feeling. It's my mission and passion to teach all of you to do the same. So I created the exclusive Project Me Passive Income Posse, where I directly teach you how to incorporate passive income streams into your life and business. If you desire the same financial freedom I've created, message me on Instagram or Facebook at Project Me with Tiffany, and I will send you the group application requirements. We're keeping this group small so everyone gets customized guidance and attention. All right, now back to today's episode. Welcome to the Project Me Passive Income Posse and Podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter. Today's episode is how to get paid and recognized as a social media influencer on Instagram and Facebook. So you guys are scrolling through the gram, scrolling through your Facebook feed, and I'm sure by now you see countless people who are hashtag living their best lives, hashtag working from anywhere, right? Nomad lifestyle. They're in Bali on the beach, you know, and they have their laptop, And they're just like sitting in the sand with their laptop, like their laptop won't get damaged or like they can actually see the screen with the sun coming down. But that's okay, (laughs) Right. Or you see people that are, you know, having retreats all over the world or they're someone who, you know, seems like they get sent tons and tons and tons of free shit and they're getting paid just kind of trying to look you know, looking cute and showing off their skin because they use this cream or oil or check out my top or whatever it is. And I'm here to tell you that a majority of that is bullshit. But I'm also here to tell you that a minority of it, but a solid percentage of it, I would say 10% is real life and is very possible. Um, So There are people who want to give the impression because that's what they think they have to do in order to get clients or sales or um, sponsors, right? They feel they have to almost show that they're already doing it um, to get that. Then there's people who are really genuine, who are passionate about travel and travel, you know, fairly on the cheap to start. And they have a travel blog and they found ways to monetize this lifestyle of them doing that. There are also makeup artists and people before they were influencers, right? Like this skinny confidential chick, you know, I don't know her, but I do know that she started out with not having people send her stuff and making anything, but she genuinely is passionate about all things, you know, skincare, that's her main jam, right? And she loves beauty skincare stuff. So she just kept at it with a blog and kept at it, kept at it. And consistency, time and patience and perseverance is the perfect recipe in order to have great success. So she kept going with it. And we don't know what people are doing behind the scenes, right? I'm here to also tell you that it's not like you just sit back and you post, you know, a P.O. box address and all of a sudden delves of shit and end up 
in your P.O. box, right? Now, can that happen for someone who already has an established audience? And then you start, you know, opening yourself up to sponsors and and potential, you know, affiliate marketing deals and stuff like that. Sure. But if you don't have a sizable audience, that is very unlikely. But here is what is possible, right? I want I want you guys to know what the myths are, but I also want to share the facts. Facts are this. You can absolutely have and get sponsors. You can absolutely have people send you free product to want you to try it. And if you like it, they want you to obviously post it. Absolutely. But what you have to do is you have to go out and get it. Once again, let's look at a dating analogy. Last time I checked, even with all the apps, online dating apps out there, you still can't find your life partner, right? Or even your boyfriend or girlfriend just by sitting on your couch, swiping right and left. You actually have to to talk to these people on the phone or on FaceTime. You have to go out in a real life date, in order to get to know someone and to build rapport and investigate and see if it's a good fit, you know, make sure that, you know, they're not crazy. (laughs) You guys, you have to do all that. So it's no different when it comes to attracting sponsorships or having people um, see you as, you know, some form of an influencer, right, and send you stuff. So you have to go out and reach out to these brands, And that's what a lot of actual even big influencers don't tell you. I give a lot of credit to, um, is it Jenna Kutcher from Gold Digger Podcast? I give her a lot of credit. She's honest how she got her um, big deal. And I'm spacing out on the name of the line. Um, It's a line that is, it's a clothing line that is really big and supporting women of all sizes kind of a thing. And she was really honest how she got that. That was many years in the making. She had been doing free content for them for years, meaning creating infographics, beautiful photos, and just sending it to them for free and truly not asking them for anything in return because she loved the brand. I think the brand's Aerie. It's coming to me like A-E-R-I-E or something like that. And this is years in the making. And they and then she would wear their stuff and tag them without asking them for anything in return. Did it because she genuinely was a user and a lover of the brand. Then years later, after she built a following, right? Even if, you know, she had 100 people and she did this, this might not have worked. So let's keep it real. But she built a following and they were like, we want her to be an ambassador for our brand. She was top of mind to them, right? So that's that's really how these brand deals work. It's rare that they just call you up or you get yourself listed on a site somewhere. Now, there are a couple sites. If you guys are interested, you can DM me and I'll send them to you. I don't want to say it on the show because I'm not, I don't want to do any promotion for those sites. Um, but just DM me at Project Me with Tiffany or in Messenger, Facebook Messenger at Project Me with Tiffany, and I'll send you those sites. But there are two sites that you can post a media kit on, which you're showing off your stats and what your niche is, right? So obviously, we know what my niche is. Um, my niche is financially teaching women to be financially free and going after their dreams and being able to make income, passive income and active income. So they no longer have to be dependent on a job, a man, one on one coaching, it's all female empowerment, how to how to go from low self worth, low net worth to high self worth, high net worth. So we know what my jam is, right? So it's made very clear there, you know, you use keywords like entrepreneurship, self worth, women empowerment, things like that. And then you list all of your stats and some key facts about you, you know, like that I was a former TV newscaster. And you have all your stats, right? So there are sites like that. Now, can someone can some brands find you from that? Sure, they can. Is the likelihood 
uh, is the likelihood high that you are going to get a solid and lucrative sponsorship deal that way? No, it is not likely. Here's the thing. You have to put yourself in the mind of the brand director, the brand manager, the digital marketing director, the people who are in charge of coordinating with brand ambassadors and influencers, okay? You have to put yourself in that mind. And even if we're looking at a smaller brand, like a boutique brand or something like that, put yourself in that entrepreneur's mind, that brand, you know, that brand founder's mind, right? They want someone who actually loves the brand and really uses it even before you were paid to because you it comes across you want it to be authentic people know when you're looking at celebrity sites and they have those fit fab fun boxes or that fit tea everyone knows that's bullshit okay everyone knows oh i've you know i'm seeing it everywhere they're just paying for impressions right most people, most people know, okay, like I highly doubt it, right? That's most, that's not what brands want. Brands want it to come across genuine. And now you're being paid for their efforts. Basically, you're being paid to talk about it more and to showcase it. But you already spoke about it. You've already mentioned it, right? So here's what you can do. If you really want to establish yourself within your niche, right? As an influencer, you want to be open to making money off of affiliate sales or things like that. Take a look at first, what is it? What do you love and what do you use daily? Make a list of that. I'm talking the actual brand name products. Make a list of stuff that you use daily. Then take a look at your brand. What is your niche online? And if you're just, you know, Sally Joe. I have an Instagram where I post a picture of my, you know, my baby doing something cute and my dog and the occasional vacation shot. Well, guess what? You don't have a brand. That's not a business. So first, you'd have to have a business. You can't just be doing random shots, right? Even a celebrity like a Jennifer Gardner or whatever. She has an actual brand. Her name is her brand. She's the brand. She's known for she's known that she's a mom. She's known for being funny. Um, she's a girl next door. She has a brand. Okay. Then there's other people who have, you know, maybe edgier brands or they're an they're a celebrity, but they're also an animal advocate, right? So you have to stand for something and you have to have a brand. So let's say your brand is your you're a fitness coach or you're a, you're a mom who's also a fitness coach or, you know, you got to think of what it is. Okay, now let's put down everything that you use on a daily basis. Now you're going to cross reference. Okay, and I'm using the fitness example. Your, your whole brand is your, you know, you're a fitness coach. You also sell other fitness things. Maybe you have an app. Maybe you have a program, et cetera. Okay, now take a look at those things you use daily. Which ones make sense with your brand? Okay, there's some things you're going to use daily that make absolutely no sense with your brand. Okay, but fitness and health and wellness have a lot of great ties, right? A lot of great ties to what we use. But let's say um, you use like, you know, you have a skin regimen you use eh, that that's not really a great tie in with fitness. Okay, you can really squeeze it and see how it could work. But it's not an obvious tie, you want it to be an obvious tie. So maybe you have a go to headbands you use go to scrunchies you use, you have go to um, athletic wear brands that you use. Okay, you want to think of what are your what are your go to's? Maybe you use um, a certain meal prep service, maybe use meal prep containers, a shake container, whatever you use for your protein shakes and your supplements. Those are the things that you cross reference like, okay, this makes sense with my brand. Okay, not like I use a Sonicare toothbrush, even though it's true, and you genuinely genuinely use a Sonicare toothbrush and love it. That doesn't make sense with your brand. So leave those ones out. That's why I want you to cross reference. So if you guys listen to the opener of my podcast, right, I make it very clear that I'm office supply obsessed. That is true. If any of you follow my Instagram stories, which you should because they're interesting and funny as shit <laughs> at Project Me with Tiffany, um, you'll see I'll even post pictures of 
like office supplies I use regularly, or I'll even take shots making fun of myself, like having heart palpitations in an office supply store, or like what I'm staring at right now is literally a carousel that's filled with probably 150 Sharpies of every color. I'm obsessed. Like it's genuine is my point. So it's genuine and it makes sense with my brand because I teach financial freedom. I teach business. I am a business and money coach. So it makes sense, right? Because in business, what do you need? You need office supplies. I am a teacher. What do you need when you are a teacher and you teach people things and I'm on stage teaching people things or I'm in small groups teaching people things? You need office supplies. So that is a great tie-in, okay? There's there's a beautiful tie-in there. That's why you guys... um see me sharing a lot about inner guide planners. Okay. They're a great sponsor of mine, but I genuinely loved inner guide planners before they paid me. They didn't pay me to like them. What sponsors pay you for is they pay you to showcase how much you like them, not to get you to like them. Now, are there some brands who don't give a shit? Yeah, but they're going after celebrities. That's like I said, that fit tea. And there's some other stuff where they don't they they want to pay you like a million dollars to like them. And last time I checked, you could probably pay a lot of people to like to like them for like 500,000 a post, okay, or even 20 grand a post. But most brands, most brands don't want that even big brands, because it, it truly doesn't translate to great sales and it can negatively impact the brand. And when you've spent so much time and money creating and establishing a brand, you don't want something like that to um, ruin or devalue that asset. So here's the thing. It's not like I, I'm going to use Inner Guide Planners as an example. They didn't call me and ask me and say, I want to sponsor you, Tiffany. And nor did I expect them to, and nor did I wait for them to do so, right? I went after them. But first, I organically showcase them. I use them in posts. I use the planners in professional photo shoots because it is genuine. It is something I really use every day. Okay, I made sure I tagged them. I talked about them. I interviewed the founder. Um, the co-founder on my podcast, I was not expecting anything in return. I wasn't even expecting a free, free planner. Now, would I have been excited to get a free planner? Hell yeah, I'm excited to get office supplies of all kinds, right? Um, but I wasn't expecting it, nor did I ask. That was for sure offered. I'd love to send you a free planner because she's a very smart, Linda's a very smart um, businesswoman. And she knows the cost of her sending me some of her latest products and the likelihood because I love the brand of me sharing it is high. So that's pretty goddamn cheap advertising. Do you see what I'm saying? But it's not like I just sat back here and like waited for people to appear, right? So that's why I want you guys to understand how it really works. There are people out there who make it look like Okay, that they are sponsored, um, that that they're getting paid to post because they feel if they make it seem that way, it's going to attract other sponsors. Okay, so I don't want you putting too much clout. Like, how is this person seemingly getting paid to post or a sponsored, and they have like spot they're sponsored and they have four thousand followers? Like, wow, what's wrong with me or whatever? You don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but I can tell you how it really works being in being in this business and being an entrepreneur 11 years and personally coaching quite a few influencers out there. I'm telling you how it works. It's kind of like media opportunities, right? Like getting on TV or getting featured in a magazine. Um, unless you have a post, which is rare, that goes viral or your friend, you know, you have an inside hookup or something like that. Uh, you're not going to just get a phone call from NBC. Oh, hey. Hey, Tiff. We see that you're um, a female entrepreneur who really, you know, really wants to empower women to be financially free. We want to interview you on the five o'clock news. Um, no, that is not how it works. Okay. You have to make these people's lives easier. 
you have to make it very clear that you care and it's genuine and you have to give, give, give before you receive. And you have to give without the expectation you're going to receive, okay? I have also shared brands that I genuinely love, okay? Genuinely love and have given um, a given sincere space on my Instagram feed, time on my podcast, energy, etc., to where I've not received anything, but I'm not resentful or mad because I didn't go into it with the assumption of getting something for free or that they're going to work with me. I did it because it was genuine. And if and when it's the time is right and appropriate, right, it'll happen because I'm doing my I'm doing my end. I've already given. Now, I wouldn't want you guys to overgive, just like I wouldn't want you to do that in a personal relationship with a client relationship. I don't want you to do that in this case either. So let me give another example. I won't say the brand's name because my lawyer wouldn't want me to. (laughs) So I won't say the brand's name, but there is a certain brand that I am totally obsessed with that I've used for years, that I have, I have it throughout my house, okay? And I have shared and I have tagged. I have even reached out directly. Um, I even asked for something simple, which is a good tip, you guys, to, you know, test the waters. I have asked for um, an affiliate link um, or even a discount link, not even affiliate link, a discount link. Like, do you have a discount link for my followers? You know, even a 10% link because people are asking me about the products that I'm showing and they want to get it. And I know that they would be much more likely to buy even if you gave me a 10% discount code, you know, 10, 15, 20% discount code or something like that. That's a really good way to test the waters okay, to see what happens, because you're not asking them for money, you're not even asking to make money with an affiliate link, and see what happens. Well, this brand, even though they can clearly tell in their DMs, and they can clearly tell if they're looking at their stats, that I have shared, right? I have shared, it's genuine, etc. They said something to me like, oh, well, we'd love to work something out with you. Um, Yeah, let me see what we can do and we'll get back to you. Okay, great. I'm super excited about this. I'll check back with you in two days. Okay, that's what I said, right? Because I always like giving a, a timeline to something. Plus, I knew I just posted about it and people did actually ask me about it, right? Nothing, no word, nada. And I, and I already knew just because I've been in business a long time, that's not a really great sign. Okay, because when someone really wants something, they don't they don't even need to wait two days. So I was like, especially when it's a no brainer, like, dude, you're giving me you could give me a 10 percent off code at the very least. And you're going to get sales like that's stupid not to. Right. I mean, that makes no sense to me. But anyway, they didn't get back to me. I got back to them. Like I said, I followed through. I kept my side of the street clean and I just said, you know, hey, haven't heard from you. Um, did you come up with a discount code that I can offer my followers who want to buy the want to buy my favorite products? And didn't hear anything back. So I got ghosted by a brand, by the way, that is not an inexpensive brand that I own most of their SKUs, meaning most of their products within their brand. That's how much of a fan I am. And I went, huh, that's interesting. So this is my example of overgiving. This is what I wouldn't want you to do. I already did that. I'm not saying I would give up, okay? I'm not saying I'd give up at this point, but I'm not going to continue to promote them for free when they won't even throw a bone, and it's not even to me, it's for themselves. So I wouldn't continue to promote for free in that case. I move on. That's why I want you guys to create a list of regular things that you use every day and then cross-reference and that it makes sense and it's in alignment with your brand and your niche. And 
So, okay, that I can just move down the list to something else. Now, I'm not saying to give up. The next step would be for me to go on LinkedIn and find out who actually is the brand director, who is the person, who is the digital director, digital marketing director, the person who's in charge at that brand of influencers and ambassadors and things like that. Because for all I know on social media, I'm dealing with an outsourced person who is in the Philippines with all due respect, right? Or I could be dealing with an intern who's 20 years old at University of Boston that's, you know, that's doing this four hours a week. We have no idea, right? So that would be the next step. That's why I'm saying not to give up. But in the meantime, I'm not going to give them any more free promotion because I already gave and gave and gave and they didn't even throw a little bone. If they threw that little bone, Sure, I would I would keep giving, but not like I'm not saying posting every day, anything like that. But I'd probably I would probably still post like once a week, once every two weeks. So that, you know, so far they lost out. Right. I'm not saying it's a lost cause, though, but that's that's reality. Now, here's the other important tip. You also will have a much higher chance of becoming an influencer, getting sponsorship deals, really solid affiliate links. And I mean a solid buy. They're not the standard link that, you know, a lot of these companies will have an affiliate program listed right on their website for, you know, it's affiliate for the masses. Oh, I don't want that. I want I want more skin in the game because I'm going to I'm going to sell more for you and promote more for you. So that's not enough for me. Now, obviously, if you have only 100 followers or 200 followers or something like that, that is a great place to start, um, is to start looking at your favorite products and looking for their affiliate programs. Um, But I would only pick at the most three, because otherwise, then you're constantly promoting to your audience and it comes across like you're always selling. So you you can't, you're not, you're not going to make money promoting all the things, right? You just have to focus on, you know, two or three things and promote those regularly. Okay. So what I want to share is when this tip is you have to think strategically. Again, you have to think like how the brand would think. So for example, every morning, I do drink Dunkin' Donuts coffee. I am obsessed. I rarely talk about it and mention the brand. You guys hear me talk about coffee all the time. Like it's, I make jokes, I reference it. I actually drink it while I'm on, but I don't, I don't tag them. I don't hashtag them and I don't mention it. And here's why it's not because I don't love them, it's because Dunkin' Donuts is such a big brand. And I already know they only go after celebrity, um, celebrity influencers and sponsors. So I'm talking like big time athletes, big time celebrities. Okay, so I already know I'm not in alignment with their current marketing plan. So therefore, I mean, yeah, I could throw them a bone and tag them, but they're not really going to care. Okay, I shouldn't say they're not going to care. I don't have the I don't really know that, but they're not it's it's going to get lost in the weeds. They're getting they're getting thousands and thousands and thousands of tags a day. Okay, so I, I'm just not going after that. That doesn't mean that's not going to change strategically at some point. Um, I just energetically know and strategically know that's not a good match, right? So then what you want to do is go, okay, right? We know that Tiff's all about coffee, using myself as an example. I love coffee. There's a lot of brands that I could very well love. I just not tasted them. Okay, so I'm open to trying, right, more like boutique type coffee brands, because these smaller brands, not like a Starbucks or a Dunkin Donuts, but these smaller brands, right, they don't have the budget to work with celebrity influencers, but they do want influencers. So they'd look for people who are, you know, in a niche, who are in a niche market or a micro niche market, right? And that could be a better pairing. So then you can also go and look and research and try, like my case, different coffees that I would love that are more in alignment. And then I can start sharing about and using their brand and target them, if that makes sense. So let's go back to the fitness coach 
Okay. Fitness wellness coach analogy where you're like living in workout clothes. Uh, the likelihood of anything happening for you, unless you have a significant amount of followers, I would say, <sighs> I don't love giving exact numbers because there's always a unicorn situation, but let, listen, you're, you're living in workout clothes. This is your jam. It fits your brand and you're constantly tagging Lululemon. The likelihood of you getting some sort of brand ambassador deal with Lululemon is going to be very slim if you have under 20,000 followers. Could it happen if you have over 20,000? It could because I've seen it happen with them before. And it has to be genuine, right? And you have to post all their crap and tag them and you're going to have to go after them. They're not going to give you a ring, right? You're not a celebrity. Um, now, if you have hundreds of thousands of followers, a million followers, that's when brands will start coming to you or you're in such a micro niche that, and so is that brand, it's a no brainer. Because here's the thing, when you have fewer followers, your engagement is higher, okay? So you could, you might have, you know, two, 300, 400 likes on a post and you get 50, 60 comments. But when you start getting um, bigger and have more followers, you'll have a bunch of likes and then maybe you'll have like 17 comments, right? Your engagement genuine, generally does go down, which that's the benefit of a micro niche market is you have high engagement. Therefore, you have a higher conversion, even though the numbers are lower. So I want you guys to look at brands that, you know, like that are of like level. So let's say you're someone who's really into makeup or skincare or something like that. And let's say you're super into using like Clinique. Okay, I'm just throwing out a brand because I use um, I use Clinique like CC cream. That's what made me think about it. You use Clinique. Well, it's a major freaking brand, you guys. It's a multi-billion dollar brand. And if you open any magazine, they pay, you know, top models and actresses a shit ton of money um, to be ambassadors and model for them because they have the money and it's that big of a brand, okay? So I would not recommend that be the product, even though you love it, that you spend time talking about. You want to pick a brand that is lesser known um, and isn't some multi-billion dollar brand. So it's a lesser known brand, but you like it. Maybe there's a certain kind of lashes you wear or a certain lip gloss, but it can't be one of these big brands, okay? You would have to have a crap ton of followers for that. I'm talking a minimum of 500,000 for that to do anything. So you just need to think about it in that way. Um, on top of it, even if you pick a small brand, that doesn't mean you're going to get anything other than a heart <laughs> in your DMs if you get that, right? You still have to do something. You still have to say something. You still have to ask a question. You have to at least ask, you know, if you have a podcast, try to get someone on a podcast or try to get a discount link or an affiliate link but for your all for your followers because they love it and start there and then start researching on who is the person in charge of deciding sponsorship and ambassador stuff at their company you can straight out ask in the dms the person may or may not know or may or may not answer you and my next step would be go to google go to linkedin and look and see who are you know director of marketing director of social media director of digital marketing you know, those kind of things. So I hope that gives you guys some clarity on how all this stuff works. Um, I, I want you guys to understand that, um, is it, is it simple and straightforward? It is, but it isn't what most people think. Okay. It's not like, again, even I'm not going to my, I'm a, I'm a, I'm considered a strong micro niche cause I have great engagement, right? And I also have, <clears throat> I also have that notoriety of being a former newscaster, which adds credibility. I'm a self-made multimillionaire, more credibility, yada, yada. I don't, my system, when she goes to my PO box, it's not like the things like overflowing, right? We might get like 
one or two things a week. And quite frankly, I don't, I don't want free shit to get free shit. I've been sent stuff that makes no sense with my brand. And it's like, okay, thanks. But I've been sent hats um, with weird colors and stuff on the front. I've been sent t-shirts, stuff. I don't wear conventional t-shirts, you know, things that don't make sense that it's like, why are you even sending this to me? What's funny to me is that I don't get sent office supplies. Like, if someone were smart, every you know, if they had a planner, a journal, um, pen sets, stickers, um, notepads, you know, if that was any any sort of you know stationery, any sort of goods like that, that'd be really smart to send me. But I don't get that. So I have to, if I want that, if I want that passive income, you know, it's partly passive, partly active, right? Because you do have to post content and talk about it. If I want that, I have to, I have to give and give with no agenda, right? Well, I shouldn't say no agenda, with a hopeful agenda, right? But no expectation, and then go after it, okay? But you have, you can't just do like two posts and a couple Instagram stories, and then go after them, right? You need to start a conversation that would be like you, you know, swiping right. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, talking about Tinder. So I'm talking about a popular dating app, you swipe right, and then okay, you swipe right. And then like, you're going to have to say hi or initiate conversation. You can't always expect the other person to initiate. So you, especially if you're really interested, so you initiate some kind of conversation, then you have to move that conversation off from, you know, the app and to texting off from texting and to the phone off from phone into FaceTime off from FaceTime into real life. It takes work and it takes relationship building, rapport building. Um, it's, it's just no different when it comes to attracting and converting a brand you love into a sponsor. So that's how this works, you guys. And it all just starts with one. So when you get one sponsor and you do well by them, now you have a proof of concept, right? Now you can say, this is what happened as a result of this sponsor. You know, they, they, um, increased their social media followers by 33%. Um, you know, I helped sell $5,000 worth of product or whatever, whatever it is they got, so many more impressions. So you you're able to have proof that you did something for them. Plus, people understand them brands feel comfortable like, oh, okay, so you get how this works. You get how to do this. So any questions that you guys have about becoming a social media influencer? Um, you know what, just DM me. That's the easiest way on Instagram at project me with Tiffany quick favor, do the screenshot right now. If you found this episode to be helpful and post it on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, wherever you guys spend your time and make sure you tag me at project me with Tiffany. This is how I can gauge if episodes are helpful and the information was beneficial because then I can tailor more episodes around similar content and subject matter because I'm doing this, you know, I'm actually doing this for free. I'm actually paying for doing this because I have a producer, a coordinator, et cetera. So I want to make sure it's what you guys need and you're craving and that is helpful for you. So please let me know. But any questions that you have when you do your your assignment from this episode on creating your list of products and then seeing the cross reference of that with your brand and your niche. If you have any questions or you want to ask me like a product or a brand's like on the fence and you're not sure if it's, if it's too big for you or not, just DM me. Okay. That's all you have to do is ask me. I respond to everybody. I carve out two hours a day to do that. People think I'm nuts for doing that. Well, if there wasn't a reason and I didn't enjoy it. And by the way, if it didn't turn into, you know, clients, I wouldn't be doing it. But I genuinely enjoy it. And it it also pays off too. So go ahead, DM me love to help you. Love you guys have a great day. Bye. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, 
but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others. 